Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. As part of the Back to Clinic series, I'd like to present a very interesting case to you today. What happens if your patient has a severe deep bind at retrocline upper anterior teeth? Of course, one of your concerns would be mechanotropy, how you can efficiently treat this patient. But one of the main concerns in these patients is also possibility of root resorption. We know from the research that a certain movement, especially intrusion and movement of the root in alveolar bone, expose the root to possibility of root resorption that somehow we like to prevent. But what are the factors that cause root resorption? two main factors that contribute to the root resorption one is related to the clinician and one is related to the patient from the clinical point of view application of a high magnitude of forces has been shown is more associated with root resorption application of these forces will cause extensive necrotic area inside the pdl called cell free zone and to clean this area, the bone resorbing cells will need to stay in the area for a long time. And while they are there, they may attack the adjacent root and cause a significant resorption. I should emphasize, usually during the tooth movement in the different area of the root, you may have a small resorption area that are shallow and they usually recover after the orthodontic tooth movement. However, if this resorption area become too deep, they reach to the magnitude that are irreversible and cause damage. So one way to decrease the possibility of resorption is application of lighter forces. Another part that clinician may contribute to the root resorption is through unknown mechanics. In another word, expose the root to the unwanted movement. The more that the roots move inside the bone, the more possibility of root resorption. So it is necessary to be very careful with the mechanics that we are using to minimize the possibility of root resorption. The second series of uh, main factors that cause root resorption depends on the patient. And that is bone density of the patient. The denser the bone, the more difficult for the tooth to move inside the bone, prolong orthodontic treatment, and during this uh, prolonged treatment, the bone resorbing cells have the chance to be in the area and attack both, not only the bone, but also the adjacent root. Unfortunately, the bone density of the patient is beyond our control. But uh, recently it has been shown by application of a small perforation inside the bone, it is possible to decrease the density of the bone. This procedure is that called macro perforation or MOPS was invented here in CITOR Academy. And during these procedures, a small perforation cause high magnitude of inflammatory markers in the area that will bring more osteoclasts in the area which increase the rate of bone remodeling that temporarily decrease the bone density and allow the tooth to move inside alveolar bone easier. One may ask if the number of osteoclasts goes up in the area therefore the magnitude of the root resorption should go up not low. But as I discussed in the introduction of this case, is not the number of the osteoclasts. It's important research shows how long the osteoclast stayed inside the area. That's the most important factor. By increasing the rate of tooth movement and increasing the bone remodeling, you would not allow the osteoclast to sit on the surface of the root in the format of the odontoclast and cause significant root resorption. So, in summary, not the number of the osteoclasts, but how long they sit stationary on the area is the main factor that contribute to the root resorption. Let's look at the case that we wanted to present today. A young adult male patient with a severe uh, class 2 div 2 skeletal patterns, severe retrocline upper anterior, severe deep bite so much that caused recession of the lower anterior teeth, a cant of occlusal plane and asymmetry of the arches. In addition to affecting his function, his appearance, 
the patient also had some sign and symptom of TMJ problems. To address these problems, orthogenetic surgery was offered to the patient, but the patient was not interested in the surgery. Therefore, we decided to provide orthodontics and orthopedics treatment. To learn about the details of the mechanotropy that was offered for this patient, you can refer to the article through the link that is presented in the screen. Just I want to summarize that we made a customized mechanotropy and we applied light forces to maximize uh, the efficiency of mechanics and minimize the possibility that we contribute to unnecessary root resorption clinically. But we, in addition, we decided to decrease the bone density to increase the rate of tooth movement and perhaps through that help to prevent root resorption by application of mops around the anterior area upper and lower where we thought the root movement would be more. At the end of the treatment, we can see improvement in the skeletal relationship of the patient, improvement in the occlusion, improvement in overjet and overbite, symmetry of the arches, no crossbite, no other uh, problem in the area. But the most important part when we did the CBCT analysis of the structure before and after, we noticed actually anterior teeth of upper and lower teeth did not show root resorption. That was a significant finding for us because in the area that we did not apply MOP is actually there was a small amount of root resorption that usually we see in orthodontics treatment. So this may bring another application for MOP to prevent root resorption in the area that we have a very dense bone. Definitely, further research in this area is required. Clinical trials need to be done, but it can be used as a clinical tip in the cases that you decided to use MOP, especially on the patients that have dense bone, and especially in the patients that you need to do mechanics that increase the possibility of resorption, such as intrusion, root movement, whether in the second order, first order, or third order. I hope you enjoyed this session of Citor uh, channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to press the like button. Thank you again.